Greetings, fellow Gorehounds, and welcome back to a Blood Splatter vlog. I'm the Horror Guru. And I'm Count Dracula. And uh, among the shows that we've been watching while we're in quarantine, one of the ones we finished is the second season, and unfortunately last season, of Happy, the Grant Morrison acid trip starring the guy from Law & Order SVU. Chris Maloney. <laughs> and and uh, Patton Oswalt. As a fucking <laughs> little blue unicorn. It's okay. Okay, so for, if you do not know what Happy is, um, the first season of Happy was basically about a guy who's a detective or, or former detective, um, now working as like like a muscle guy yeah, for hit crime, man. a hitman yeah. for a crime war. Um, he base his daughter is basically kidnapped by an evil Santa Claus, and so his daughter's imaginary friend helps him look for his daughter and try to fight the Santa Claus. Now, here's the thing. That's the premise of the first season. But that is, like, the tip of the iceberg for oh, the yeah. weirdness of the show. Oh, yeah. This show feels like it was written on, like, ten tons of LSD, and, I mean, it was Grant Morrison, so it probably so was. So probably was, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, the second season takes everything... To 11, and it was already at yep. 11, so now it's at, like, 46. I have no idea. It's like yeah. <laughs> well, like, the, the the idea here is, like, now dude is trying, Nick is trying to, you know, he's trying to clean up for his daughter. He's trying yep. to do the right thing. You know, he's trying to be a nice, stable dad. He wants to be a good dad. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. There's a bit of the unforgiven in this. He, he's even know? found, like, a normal job. He's not, like, doing crime anymore. He can't be a detective because he was kicked off the force kicked off the force for reasons explained in the first season. Yep. But he can be a taxi driver. Um uh which I think is funny because the entire time people are like, why didn't you go like Uber or something? And he's like, what's that? Like, yeah. like that's how out of touch he is. <laughs> but he wants to be good on his daughter. Um uh and uh unfortunately for his daughter, uh the mom is also kind of losing her mind because of the events yeah. of the previous season. Um, she's got a yearning, but she can't quite figure out what the yearning's for. And so she's trying to fill it with everything she can, from drugs to sex to candy at one point. Yeah. And sometimes all at the same time. Um, but she can't real fill it. But what, what's unfortunate about that is it's causing her to not pay attention to her daughter. Yeah, basically, um, as Nick is trying to be a better parent, she is becoming more like, the mom is becoming more like Nick. Yep. Yep, and unfortunately, Nick is only so good at being a parent, so the daughter's kind of off on her own in this story. Yeah. Um, which leads to some manipulations from the Easter Bunny, which is trying to get her good graces. Okay, so <laughs> we'll get to yeah. spoilers in a minute because there's a lot we yeah, can yeah, spoil yeah. here. Yeah, the Easter Bunny is, is, is a spoiler, yeah. But basically, the premise of this season is make Easter great again. <laughs> The villain wants to make Easter great again. Mega. So, so we've we've moved from from Christmas to Easter now, and um, yeah, Sunny Shine is still the head bad guy. Um, the uh, imaginary friend is going through puberty. Yep, <laughs> is becoming an angsty teenager as a result of that. Um, <laughs> there's an evil Easter Bunny going around killing people. Um, what more can I say? That's not a spoiler. <laughs> I I don't know, man. <laughs> um, the, um, the the crime lord that was thrown in in, in jail now has an evil god in him. That's, yep, that's a thing that's going that, on. In this. That starts happening. <laughs> Orcus becomes a thing in this. Uh, the Big Show shows up as as that's a... <laughs> right. Big Show is like his fucking like Sully. Yep, his cellmate. Um. <laughs> And that's all I could think of to say before we just dive into spoilers. I guess I can vaguely talk about some of the interesting things about the story, about the characters in this. Like, I kind of liked the daughter's whole journey mirroring the invisible uh, yeah. friend's journey. Yeah. How both of them are kind of like going through like this puberty phase of realizing that the world has been lying to them this whole time. Yeah. And I like that they mirror each other in that way. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, Happy almost has a relationship, but like little Bo Peep <laughs> fucking just, she don't care. She love no. him. That is actually one inconsistency I would like explained because I, I'm a little iffy on that. They established that once the, uh, once the invisible friend is no longer needed anymore, they'll disappear. But like, there's like this community of forgotten invisible friends. Yeah. I was confused about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, are they, is it that they're... Are, are these like the 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 
friends of like kids who never quite stopped believing or like what's the them. deal? You know, Maybe. some of them seem to stick around. Some of them it's don't. It's possible. This is this is the one logic I can think of. Um, and this is me giving the, probably giving the show a little more credit because the show probably didn't care. <laughs> but like my the only logic I can think of is the idea is is that something like Little Bo Peep is bigger than just an invisible friend. Yeah, it's like a, it's yeah. like something that a lot of kids believe in. So she keeps going on, yeah, even past her invisible her, her, her friend. Yeah, yeah, but but some yeah because the ones that disappear are ones that you're like I wouldn't have thought of that. Yeah, you know. Now it doesn't explain to me like why Stickman's still around. I <laughs> right, right, <laughs> exactly. But you know, I don't know. That's the only thing. I, I haven't I haven't read. I don't know how far the comic got. That's that. true. That's true. The comic might explain all of this. Yeah, like one of the things that they they intimate in this season is that happy's not a normal imaginary friend no no we'll get into that though we'll get into that because that's 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 some of my sadness about not gonna get this yes. season yeah where this fucking thing ends makes you go god damn it why didn't season three happen all right so because i want to get to the spoilers if you like fucked up shows definitely watch this if you like uh christopher maloney then he is fucking having a blast this season. He has a blast every season, but he's having a blast this season too, because at this season, he's not just playing himself. He's also playing his own grandma. So <laughs> he's, yes, he's having a good time. Um, if you like Grant Morrison, then this is a must, must, must watch. Um, and uh, yeah, um, it's, <laughs> it's a, it was, it was a sci-fi show, but it's currently available on Netflix. So check it out when you can. And with that said, let's just move on to the spoilers. Cause yeah. <laughs> So, spoiler number one, probably the biggest one, and this is why you should be mad that there isn't a season three. The third season was going to be Halloween. Oh, my God. When they showed that, I was like, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, what? I want that so bad. Now, thankfully, if you hear that it's going to be canceled and that they tease another season, and you're like, oh, man, I don't know if I want to watch this. Don't worry. Don't worry. All the key plot threads of the first two seasons are resolved by the end of this. Now, there's implications that they're going to do, they were going to do more with it in the next season, but it's resolved enough to where you can be satisfied with that. Yeah. But what makes it sad is the teases they give for the next season sounded so awesome. Yes. <laughs> um, Jeff Goldblum is God. Yes. <laughs> Which the greatest reveal is that God, God is a, is an imaginary friend that a lot of people believe in. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a, yeah. such a Grant Morrison moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why he's like, so he's like really super fucking powerful, and but but Happy fucking like just goes and talks to him, and it's it's not like him meeting Jesus or him meeting like you know the, mm -hmm. the God of the Old Testament. It's it's a little bit more like meeting Buddha by way of Jeff Goldblum because he's the one who voices it. Now this is where I think like. My goddammit cat making noises in there. I know. He's, 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 look, he's, he's, he's sandboxing it right now. Anyway, uh, this is where my, my theory that the idea that some imaginary friends are more than just that imaginary friend that a lot of kids believe in them. That's why yeah. they still exist. This is where that theory kind of holds a lot of water because the reason why the, the, God is not anyone's individual imaginary friend. Right. He is all of He's Christians. He's a collective idea of the Supreme. So he has surpassed just being an imaginary friend has now become a deity. Yeah. I think the idea is, is that all the gods in this universe, because there are gods in this universe, yeah. are imaginary friends that only exist because people believe in them. Yes. And that if enough people believe in you, then you become a god. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that seems to be the case. And... Part of the idea seems to be that Happy is on his way. His That's his journey. Mm -hmm. Because he's already got two people who believe in him. And that might grow as time goes on. Because by the end of the show, like the, the mom sees him at one point. Yeah. That he might become one of those God figures if enough people do. Yep. I mean, there's even a point in which he confronts the other God, the God of death. And the, yeah. and, 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 and it turns out that Happy is the God of love. Yeah. <laughs> and so he ends up like 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 the god of death who co who keeps spreading people killing each other. He stops that by spreading love and so they all start fucking each other. 
and having this massive orgy after just trying to all kill each other. It's great. Yep. This show's just this, this show's a ten out of ten. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sad we're not getting a third season. Yeah, and it's really it's really interesting because when Orcus does see him, he's like, "What the fuck are you? You're like me. You're like me. Except yeah. you don't spread death. You spread." And then he just kind of trails off. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we see the orgy happening. But here's the thing. Happy doesn't actually remember that happening. He kind of blanked out when it happened. So I knew the next season was going to be about him discovering that power. Yeah. That we're never going to see. Yeah, that we're never going to see. It was all going to be on Halloween because... All right, so the Easter Bunny is Smoothie from the first season. Yes, yes. That's the, that's that's a reveal. Who, who is definitely like the best reoccurring villain on the show. He's he's awesome. Yeah. In his creepiness. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the, at the end of the fucking show, fucking Nick turns him into a jack-o'-lantern and just fucking rips his head off. Damn. Well, there's an implication he might come back from the dead because Nick, yes. Nick comes back from the dead. He basically makes a deal with Orpheus to come back and basically work for Orpheus. So he's no, Orcus. Orcus. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Orcus. So he makes a deal with Orcus to come back from the dead and basically be his hitman now. So he's kind of come back to being a hitman for a crime lord, but now an imaginary crime lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The <laughs> god of, you know, the imaginary <laughs> god of death, you know. And the entire season is him having to, like, embrace the fact that he's just a killer. That he wants to be a good dad. He wants to do this. But what he is at, at, at the end of the day is that he's a murderer. And that's what he should just embrace being. And so the ultimate culmination of that is him accepting being the god of death's hitman <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's fucked up yeah 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 um, but i wanted to see where that went unlike castlevania season three it doesn't feel like a middle season though it could be had they done a second uh, another season after yeah this. yeah yeah. The, the, this one is uh there, it, it is a contained the season is a contained story threads from the first one are resolved very well there's a lot more resolutions here than like say like an empire strikes back oh yeah definitely, definitely. but like you had another season happen that expanded things more then it could feel like one in retrospect <laughs> yeah like this is one where it the fact that it ends here basically it does the right thing which is it leaves you wanting more yes you yes. know it leaves you wanting more it and completely resolves the sunny plot oh yes which is pretty cool I, I like the way they like, basically the entire reveal of that is that <clears throat> Sonny made a deal with the god of death, and so the like weird creatures, yeah, that the weird jello monster creatures that are helping him are agents of the god of death, and that basically the idea is that the god of death every few years helps someone g gain some sort of major notoriety and then has them killed. In order to uh, spread dismay. Yeah. Um, and so, like, examples of that are, like, JFK and, like, um, uh, John Lennon. Yeah, John Lennon, fucking Martin Luther King. Yep. And so Sonny was going to be the new version of that, and that was supposed to happen. But because all the events of the first season got fucked up, he was never actually killed. So there's a new plot now this season to kill him. Yeah. Because uh, the God of Death makes a deal with a smoothie who pretends to be working with Smiley. Yeah, um, and, and and it does ultimately culminate in Smiley getting one of the things killed. that I w that I pretty sure fucking season three was going to get into because they don't talk about it in this. This is like the one dangling plot, which I, is at the end of season one, the whole plot is dude is kidnapping all these children to send them to these this mis these mysterious mm -hmm. people. Who, by the end of this series, you're like, if you think about it, you're like, okay, these got to be evil imaginary friends. Probably, yeah. You know, like that seems... By to the end of this going. season, you get the impression that all the gods are. So they're probably yeah. gods. Yeah. <laughs> like, like Orcus. Yeah. You know, oh man, super fucked up. I was looking forward to it. I want to talk more about it, but we just recorded like two other vlogs. And I'm starting to lose my voice, which is why I'm drinking so much water. I'm like, yeah, well, I mean, like there's, there's a lot to talk about, but I think the, the, at the end of the day, the important thing is it's a really great show and it's, it's on Netflix the right now and we might get lucky. Maybe they'll pick up a third season. Who knows? I really hope someone does, but I'm not holding my breath because it was such a cult show. It, it, the fact that it was on the sci-fi channel, I think, ruined its chances. Unfortunately, yes. Unfortunately, like, shows on the sci-fi channel generally don't last very long. Occasionally yeah. they do. Yeah, like, this one has gotten new life because of Netflix, but I don't know how big that new life is. No, I think if this was on Amazon Prime, it would be... Would it oh, been, yeah, no, if this had been on Amazon Prime, I think it would have been... It would have been... Just, boom! It would have been fine. But because it was on uh, sci-fi, it didn't last very long. Yeah, this, this show does not have the audience it deserves. Like, you 
usually shows do, but this one doesn't. But I, I'm going to spread the gospel of Happy because yeah. the show is a fun acid trip of a show. And maybe if enough of you see it on Netflix, maybe they'll pick it up. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could, could, could get lucky. Hashtag save happy. <laughs> um, and with that said, where can they find you, Count Jackula? Well, you can find me on twitch.tv slash count underscore Jackula. I stream most days at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And... Definitely every Thursday and Sunday at Pacific Standard Time. And you can also follow me on Twitter at count underscore Jackula. It's the same for both. Except Twitter's got that little at. But, you know. It's a little, you get yeah. It. yeah. You get it. You can find it. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's me. How's you? <laughs> Y'all know me. I'm the Horror Guru. Find me at the Horror Guru on Twitter, on Twitch, on Facebook. Just look up the Horror Guru or Blood Spider Cinema and I'll be there. And if you'd like to help out our channels more directly, then be sure to check out our Patreon pages. And if you decide to go the Patreon route, remember that even a dollar a month can go a long way. And uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to this video. And if you haven't already yet, be sure to ring that notification bell so that you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And good God, I'm going to go rest my voice because I can feel it going right now. <laughs> so uh, peace out, my fellow gorehounds. And uh, that's our third vlog for the day. <laughs> it's also like my allergy medications dry out my throat. Oh, shit. And we've been having bad allergies lately because the backyard needs to be fucking... <laughs> yeah. Dealt with. It's pretty bad. And with that said, peace out, my fellow gorehounds. And I'll catch y'all later. <laughs>